This is Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. I am Rita Lund. And hello, I'm Joe Barnhart. I want you to know if you do or don't believe in a deity, you are not alone. We want you to be with us. Right here in East Tennessee, you can find those who are searching and trying to find out the answers uh, both those who are believers and those who aren't, those who hold to agnosticism, atheism, and those who don't. We're a program sponsored by people rooted in science and free of supernatural beliefs. On today's show, we're mm -hmm. going to try to answer a viewer's question. Where do we get our values? Yeah, and now I'm going to talk a little about our sponsors. The Atheist Society of Knoxville uh -huh. frequently has a fun meetup at a bar or eatery. Tonight's meetup is at Barley's in the Old City, starting around 5.30. Look for the silver-jacketed copy of The God Delusion standing upright on the table. And as Matt Dillahunty at Atheist Experience says, everyone is welcome to our happy hour for food, drink, and conversation. But if you plan to preach, <laughs> proselytize, provoke, or punch. Please don't. <laughs> okay. Okay, the rationalists of East Tennessee have uh, several monthly meetings on the first and third Sunday mornings of the month, usually have uh, presentations, lively round discussions of the presentation. And the second Sunday is uh, at the Skeptics Book Club. On the fourth Sunday, uh, it's it, mixing things up a bit, sometimes with a get-together called Reflections Meeting, and it features a potluck dinner in someone's home. Sometimes we meet to play board games or similar activities just to have an enjoyable time together. Later in the show, we'll give you our websites to visit for additional details, including times and locations. So, now, so the news. The news. We've got some interesting right. news. And I think the most important thing in terms of news in the past week was that horrendous, horrific shooting in Charleston mm -hmm. with all its violence. The Nation magazine, speaking of the shooter, says that he credited the website of the Council of Conservative Citizens, a far-right organization, for providing his radicalization. In memory and in honor of these people whose lives have been lost, we are going to read their names. Wikipedia has given this summary. Cynthia Marie Graham, age 50, heard, age 54, was a Bible study member and manager of the Charleston County Public Library System. Mm -hmm. Susie Jackson, age 87, was a Bible study and church choir member. Age 70, Ethel Lee Lance was a search church sectum. Depayne Middleton Doctor, at 49 years of age, was a mm -hmm. Bible study teacher employed as a school administrator and admissions coordinator at Southern Western. Wesleyan University. Yeah, these were killed, and here's some more. Uh, Clementa Penke, is that the way you pronounce that? Penke. Penke. Okay. Penke. Uh -huh. As the church pastor and a South Carolina state senator. And... Uh, Taiwanza Sanders, who's a Bible study member, a nephew of Susan Jackson, and then Daniel Simmons, a pastor, uh, served at the uh, Greater Zion uh, Methodist Church, A.M.E. Church, and at one, in Rwanda, and then uh, Sharonda Coleman Singleton, a pastor also, also a speech therapist, and track coach at Goose Creek High School, and uh, he pronounced that Myra Thompson, who was a Bible school teacher. All of these people were killed. killed. It was Gosh. just horrendous, and our sympathies go out. Yes. Uh, here it is. Well. On to our program. On to our program. All right. We're going to start with values. How, how do they, how do values emerge? Well, let me start with giving a very Good simple definition, definition of that. That's a values. Good idea. How's that? All mm -hmm. right. 
values are a person's principles or standards of behavior, or they can be one's judgment of what is important in life. Mm -hmm. Now, since you're older, I shall defer to your seniority. <laughs> so have a word or two, Joe. <laughs> you have the white hair, and I'm envious that you have hair. <laughs> okay. How do these values come into being? How do they develop? How do they emerge? And that's what we want to deal with today. Um, and one, one of our callers last time gave me something to think about. If I understood what he was saying, I don't want to misinterpret it. He said uh, people have something, then other people want them. And so we just we establish a value for it. In other words, what are you prepared to pay for? And we were talking about sacrifice. And, I thought that had some insight, too, and 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 uh, he was emphasizing other people have something we want, but sometimes we want something that's of value other people may not have. For example, if you're in the desert and you want water, <laughs> you're going to have great value of that water because you need it so much and want it. So what I'm suggesting is at rock bottom of values are wants, needs, and desires. And, uh, of course, implied in that is, this, is the satisfaction. And so we value something that will bring that, that satisfaction to us. And sometimes, in connection with what we were talking about last time, we are prepared to sacrifice one thing in order to obtain it or to secure it. And uh, people, of course, value, and it, uh, what's important to understand is people value different things sometimes. True. Although uh, we have uh, maybe 80% of our values we have in common, uh, our food and water and drink and friendship and, and uh, you know, just uh, good oxygen. <laughs> our topic was where do they come from? Okay, where do they so come from? So where do they come from? I mean, let's just start from the get-go. We have this new baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, what who I'm... Who is like a, a blank tablet, tabla rusa. Okay, first of all, they start with desires. If, if there were no desires and wants, the issue wouldn't even come into being. But these desires are in a context. In other words, the, the satisfaction of the desires don't come about until the context can provide. And the context is the natural world, the physical world, and the social world. True. Yes. And so we have to negotiate in the, the physical world, with the physical world, and with other people to in, in interacting in order to bring values uh, and, and, or to bring the, the satisfaction into, into being and to sustain our values. So they come from the interaction of our desires and the world that we're in and, and the putting them together. Without desires, there wouldn't be any point of talking about values. Well, be you have to start with basic needs, I'd say. Exactly, yeah. Basic needs. You know, the food, then, clothing, shelter. Exactly, yeah. Routine. And then you have wants and you have desires that you don't particularly need. Yeah. Uh, and, and then even when you have a need to satisfy that need, you have to need something. You need something else to bring the satisfaction about. So we create needs because we have other needs and other wants. And they come about because we discover that we have to, like, like um, we, we value certain rules and regulations, for example, in football. We have to have those rules and regulations because we want football rather than mayhem. If we didn't have the rules, we wouldn't have football. I, and, and I explained to my granddaughter once that I'm very strict. She said, you're very strict, Grandpapa. And I said, yeah, especially when you and I are driving in a car. How she caught on right away was glad I was very strict on those rules. But you're strict 
act because we value certain things and want to maintain them. And rules, then, are part of the means for maintaining those values. That's true. I went at this so simply, Joe. Go ahead. I really did. Uh -huh. I was thinking that probably we start getting our values uh -huh. from our parents. Well, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they do it by words uh -huh. and they do it by actions. Uh -huh. And the more consistent the action, the more positively a youngster can learn uh, a value. Yeah, yeah. I think it makes good sense. All right. So we're and then there's religious, you know, I mean, there's, you know, religious tenets, uh -huh. such uh -huh. as the Ten Commandments, uh -huh. you know, in the Christian church. Um, numerous religions have uh -huh. different uh -huh. tenets. Uh -huh. And if... So we're, we're saying virtually the same thing. You're saying we get them from parents, and I'm suggesting where the parents get them, you see. And they didn't just drop out of the sky. <laughs> No. They came through interacting with the world of nature and with other people, and they realized they have to develop some things that are more important than other things in order to have a pleasant and a good life, and also to stay alive. And a, a good example is we develop rules of just ordinary grammar in, in conversation so that we can communicate clearly to each other and not miscommunicate. And that's ba language in some ways is a basic of, that says don't bear false witness. Language itself is built on not bearing false witness. Right. I, would, I was thinking when it, thinking mm -hmm. about values, and I thought, okay, mm -hmm. pick pick the really important one, and and I would say honesty would be it. Yeah, that's because it, that's, that's that, basic. That's the basic yeah. one. Um, yeah, truth telling. You can't even have ordinary. Exchange of goods. <laughs> yeah, a conversation. Conversation, Anything, Unless yeah. there's a l honesty yeah, yeah. involved. Yeah. Um, so know, honesty, I mean, uh, try to have a marriage without honesty. Try to have a friendship without honesty. You can't have a police force without honesty. <laughs> you can't have a business without honesty. It's, <laughs> it's not a business. It's yeah. thievery. Right. In fact, thievery depends upon other people being honest. True. If you're going to steal, you've got to have other honest people out who don't, who are not thieves. Same with lying. If everybody's a liar, lying doesn't even have, it doesn't work. You have to have a lot of truth telling going on before thievery, which is a parasite, can even get started. And, and let me take one on the, in, in the, the Bible to see what you think. See, I'm arguing that the, 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 the Moses did not get the, the Ten Commandments off a of mountain. They were already taught by his mother. We talked about this earlier. And even the one keep the Sabbath holy has some common sense and common consensus to it. And that is if people work hard at labor, they want some time off to work, and that's what the word holy really means. It's separated, and it's special. And you've got that day of rest, a day of recreation, <laughs> so that you don't have to be in the same grind day after day. And that made good common sense. And it developed slowly as people work together, saying, basically, Let's take off and rest a while. <laughs> and you can see all the Ten Commandments. You can take them one and, a, and see how they did develop out of common consensus. I had written the word common sense mm -hmm. under my page for a program mm -hmm. with the question, how much influence does common sense have Enormous. in the development of values? An <clears throat> Enormous. Well, we once mentioned on the program, common sense means you got at least five senses, and you put them in common, <laughs> and, and that's how you test. You test one with another, and then we have common consensus. 
in a, in when you have a group together, so we have common consensus on our common purposes and goals, and we, we value some things more than others so that we can keep the group together. Now, the cultural cultures change and groups change because often they encounter other groups, and so you have to compromise, compromise and negotiate and learn from each other. Sometimes a compromise turns out to be better for, for both. It's not necessarily a reduction yeah. so that each loses. Each may gain a lot more by learning from, from the other. Yeah. That's hard to do sometimes because that's communication. Another one of those calm words, calm <laughs> unity. <laughs> Communication presupposes, the word community is unity, but it presupposes more than one. Mm. Then. To bring this down mm -hmm. to something that you can sort of hold in your hand mm -hmm. and put in your pocket yeah, I go. and bring it out and think about, uh -huh. you know, something that's just... You know, right there. Uh -huh. you put it on your shoulder and carry it around. Uh -huh. I'm wondering, sources aside from parents uh -huh. and say religious tenants. Oh. Other Sc sources. School teachers. I talked. Had a long conversation the other day. I went to uh, Carson Newman College and sat beside a third grade school teacher. Oh. And I realized, you know, I knew it, but this helped me to understand it more specifically, how terribly important a third grade school teacher is just for the emotional health. I mean, just think of the amount of hours a third grade school teacher has, those children in her watch care, you yeah. know. And she has to reinforce them and to encourage them, to give them structure and order and yet some pleasure in learning. A desire uh, to learn. A desire to learn, yeah, to get the thrill of reading. You know, That's her job. And uh, I told her, I said, <laughs> your job compared to my job teaching in college is real work. Yeah. Because she's got a, the, the incredible patience she has to show. But it's so crucial. Furthermore, and she understood this, she helps kids so they don't become sociopaths. We've talked about this on this program. They have to learn to trust, to give and to take and to respect, and to be respected. And that has to come incredibly early. And that value of mutual respect is absolutely essential to a sane... Value. Yeah, it's another. It's absolutely essential to a sane society. And that wonderful third grade school teacher yeah. <laughs> is a major contribution, those kinds of people, to our, to our society. Now, we could uh, think of other values, just, just uh, ordinary courtesy in driving. The other day I was in, in traffic and I needed to get, I was trying to get in the left-hand lane, and they kept flowing in, and I was not going to get in there. And this lady showed some courtesy oh. <laughs> and let me yeah. get through. And in Boston, where I lived once, <laughs> because it's just, they didn't have a good road system back then, and, 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 and so people would often have to turn left, uh, turn left, and then the, they would block up this lane, and this lane would continue the flow, <laughs> so they couldn't get through, but they'd be blocking off this, and they didn't have a good system, it seemed to me, for people to turn left. And it, it made a really a mess driving in Boston at that time. And fortunately, they invented a better road system. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, New England was built a long time ago, and they didn't have, they had wagons. They did oh, not yeah, have big yeah. cars and lots of traffic. Whereas down south here, uh -huh. like Fredericksburg being a perfect example of when, as it developed, uh -huh. it huge roads. You well, you know, got more space. You got more That's space, it, space. Yeah. Yeah. So space so is we, a, va we value, we value turning space. lanes. <laughs> I, turning lanes. I value yeah. turning lanes in Knoxville. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's a good way to put it. We value many things. Why? Basically because they help develop our pleasure and our happiness. I once asked a preacher friend of mine, I said, suppose you could go to heaven and you could be holy and you could be righteous but no pleasure. Oh, boring. <laughs> and I like what he said. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, and he, he saw the point that righteousness is basically to promote pleasure, happiness. And righteousness means you just do things right in order to make it work so life will be smoother. And traffic regulations is a good example. Have you ever driven where there is there are no traffic regulations? <laughs> well, I've driven in situations where I think there are none, even though there are supposed to be. Supposed to be, yeah. Because I drive a lot. Ah. I'm thinking about uh -huh. values that change, the flexibility uh -huh. factor in values. Uh, people changing their mind. Uh -huh. I mean. Ah, uh, good. Um, I think about uh -huh. take the pro-choice uh -huh. argument. Some people have gone extremely uh -huh. from a pro-choice situation to a no-choice situation. Uh -huh. I got you, I got you. And, and you can have extremes on both sides. Some people just think you know, you just uh, no, no responsibility about any sex life. Just uh, don't think about the future, and that's that's irresponsible because, and it's not self-interest. So the base basics of good morality is self-interest. It's self-control, so you can have self-fulfillment. All right. You can't have self-fulfillment and self-realization without self-control. They go together, the left wing and the right wing of a bird. <laughs> and you can't have one without the other, it seems to me. And what you, take the change we've had in our society for we good and ill. Divorce. Yeah. Uh, and when I was a youth, uh, the, there was very, very strong opposition to having divorce at oh, all. Yes. Okay, and I can understand why. Because you have children involved, and you don't want a guy saying, well, I'm just tired of this woman. I think, I, I think I'll try out another one. But that's not marriage. Oh, we've got a caller, yes, so let's see. Call, so onward. Okay, go, caller. Oh. Well, I guess we lost out. Yeah, are you a caller? Call in. That's. I thought we had a caller. Well, go ahead. Yeah, guess not. Oh. Oh, shucks. Okay. Well, uh, let's take you the were divorce. You were talking divorce. divorce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, divorce has. Uh, you know, you can get hasty divorces. Oh. And that's foolish because you've got a lot of people involved in a marriage. On the other There's hand... A call? Okay, let's go. Press. Now, All our right. caller. Go ahead. I wonder if it's working. Are we plugged in? The light went off. Well, that's, we just lost our connection. Okay, I guess we lost on that one. Well, we'll try again. <laughs> Turn it off right now. The connection, the lights are well, on. Okay. Now, on, on, uh, you've got a good point. On, on, um, on values, we have changing circumstances. The physical aspect changes, the social yeah. aspect. Psychologically, we change. And so we maybe modify some things we value, and we may value them less because we have other things we value more. That's usually what happens is we don't simply wash out our values. We say, well, our values have to be in balance with other values. Mm -hmm. And so we emphasize some for the s sake of others. All right. Okay, let's see if our caller can come in. Speak up and let's hear. Oh, I hear a voice. Yes. Go. 
I had originally called to uh, to, to mention something about the problem with the sound, but but as I was calling, uh -huh. I believe you said something about um, the com Ten Commandments. Uh huh. Yeah. And I think you said something about all the, the Ten Commandments give us values. They they're built on values. They yeah, are. Sure. Yeah, what my point is, and, and I think you would agree, is that this is that Moses didn't get them off of a mountain. He brought them up to the mountain. He already had them from his community. Now, don't bear false witness. Are you with me? Don't steal. Yeah, I'm listening to you. I don't know if I'm with you. So but where, do you, yeah, I'm where do you think values came? The, okay, let's take the Ten Commandments. Let's do that. Which one of them would you dispute? As far as him bringing from his people up to the mountain? Now, which one of the Ten Commandments would you dispute? Uh, as far as being values. Yeah. I'll keep the Sabbath holy. Okay. Were you listening when we were talking about it? I was trying to, but you were coming through so badly. Um, Go ahead. But uh, I, I just heard that one little bit. We get our values from the Ten Commandments, and it seems to me like oh. some of them are very, very basic, as you were saying, I believe uh -huh. I heard that, uh -huh. and uh, anybody that, and, and uh, you know, the do not kill and all that, but then there's some that are totally religious. Okay, now, I was trying to point out, and I guess it didn't come through all too right. well, let me try again, that even the ke keeping the Sabbath, Sabbath day separated, distinctive, that's what holy means there. Okay. Uh, that's good because working people need some rest and recreation, some time off from hard labor. That's what that's about. Is it? Okay, okay. I, I seem to remember something about the Bible, picking up sticks or getting your mule out of a ditch might not be a good idea on the Sabbath. And I do know well, that no, some no, factions it's, it's the, other way, it. it's the other way around. They were trying to say... It's good to have a day off from labor, but sometimes, ah. sometimes if an ox gets in the ditch, then don't be a fanatic. Get it out. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, now that makes sense. That sure. makes sense. That's a good I mean, way to the put poor it. ox doesn't know what day of the week it is. Okay. Right. And that, that's our whole point. It, it makes sense. Uh huh. Yeah. And don't, but but it, you, but uh, it makes sense because God said so. No, I, I'm glad oh. you brought that up. Uh, I would say this. Let's assume there is a God. Then, oh, if he's going... Is this the atheist show I'm talking to? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, but we will assume there's a God. All right. Let's, as, let's assume you're an atheist with an imagination. Are you with me? I have an imagination, too, and I'm with you. Okay, let's go. Let's assume there's a God. Imagine. Okay? I'm a deist. I got you. Let's go. Oh, okay, now, if the God or deity is God, good, then he's going to be coming up with ethics that are workable and rational and helpful. Yeah, I guess he would. Okay. Now, that's what we're talking about. What we're talking about ought to be compatible with both a rational theist and a rational naturalist. In other words, we have common ground here. We've got values in common with each other. A rational theist wants not to have lying. A rational naturalist wants not to have lying as a pattern of life. You see what we're getting at? Sure. So all those Ten Commandments, even the one, Thou shalt have no other gods <laughs> before me. Yeah. Because in those days, the nation was tied up with religion. That's more like having commitment to your country. Are you with me? Yes, I am with you. Uh, just could just assume that I'm with you. Go ahead. Uh, it's good. No, I answered yes, I'm with you. I got you. Um, so when uh -huh. so when people say that our country is built on the Ten Commandments, maybe we should give them a little credit for that because it's common sense? I disagree with that about the country being built on the Ten Commandments. Oh, yeah! I I'm think with you. I'm with you too. <laughs> I, uh, I'm what I, what we're trying to say is the Ten Commandments is built upon something but far older than Moses. I see. Well, do you think that people realize that lying 
not honoring your father and mother, not killing people, was probably a good idea before Moses? Before what? Well, if it's uh, if these laws are coming down from a deity, as the Bible says, uh -huh. then we would expect the deity to have something a little bit more or less than what you'd call common sense. And I believe that's what you're saying, is that Moses brought the uh, ideals from his tribe up to the, up to the mountain yeah. and brought them back down. Yeah, yeah. So he, took them, so he basically took the, the Ten Commandments for a little walk. Mm -hmm. up, up and down. Yeah, assuming oh. that Moses' story has any fact to it at all, and maybe just the invention of the scribes at that time. Well, a lot of people do think that, that it has a lot of facts, so for those viewers, mm -hmm. uh, you, you might uh, might be we have discussing the idea that did it really, did this, uh, these ideas really come from God. Um, because if, if, if even even looking at it from your point of view, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if uh -huh. if those people that think that the Ten Commandments come from God, and we should do it because God says so, it makes me really, really grateful that there's a do not kill there. Uh -huh, because uh -huh, uh -huh. otherwise, you know, some people who adhere to the Bible would be running around and killing people. Oh, God, they do that anyhow, don't they? Well, here's what here's here's what I'd like to suggest to you. As so, suppose you're a theist. You believe in God. The reason God said don't kill is because it makes sense to say that. Otherwise, you couldn't have a community without that rule. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And but the thing about it is, even after he wrote the do not kill, mm -hmm. then the Bible presents. A exceptionally long, obscenely long list of exceptions and overriding circumstances by which one can kill someone. Well, I'm afraid you have a real good point there. Gentlemen, I need to ask a question uh -huh. or to intercede here yeah. and get things a little bit sort of in okay. general. I mean, we happen to be in a part of the country where Christianity is sort of predominant. But I'm thinking, let's pretend uh -huh. we're on the opposite side of the world, and we're dealing with Hindus and Buddhists, exactly. and the same kind of rules mm -hmm. apply there, mm -hmm. and they're not out of a Bible. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, the the whole world mm -hmm. has something in common called the Golden Rule. Mm -hmm. Doing unto others. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus invented that, didn't he? No. No, no, a, I think it was going on long before, long, 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 before, long before Jesus. Okay. Long before. So I just. Now, I'll tell you how I think it develops early. Now, I don't know where the very beginning is. Oh, wait a minute. I thought she was going to ask about something. Go ahead. No, I just wanted you all to think about the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. That we happen to be sitting here in East Tennessee yeah. in Knoxville speaking English. Uh -huh. Go someplace else. Speak a different language. Be in an entirely different entirely. culture yeah. and think about values. And that's where you see the commonality. Exactly. Would you agree all cultures have mothers trying to teach your kids? Right. <laughs> and, right. They, and they say... Uh, Johnny, don't push your sister down. How would you feel? That's the golden rule. Yeah. No, so that's why I just wanted to sort of broaden this out to well, okay. as opposed well, to I don't want to. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm going to have to. Uh, the, uh, besides, I got something to do. I've got to. I've got to call my sister and apologize for pushing her down those stairs. <laughs> and well done. Well done. An apology any, any, is never too late. Anyway, I'll, I'll let somebody else. Uh, this has been nice. Thank you for well, talking. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> now, I think it's time for a break. Our break. No, time All for right. a break. And we thank our caller, caller for coming in, and after the break, we are a call-in show uh -huh. so that we would be happy to take other calls and get, more, get some enlightenment ourselves. All right. Now, in case you're just tuning in, this is the Free Thought Forum a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. 
Free Thought Forum is funded jointly by them and by individual contributions. Shows are live every Tuesday from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Knoxville Community Access Television, Channel 12, or 194, depending on your local cable network. Tell your out-of-town friends to see us streaming online at ctvknox.org. Okay, and this is a call-in show, so we want to welcome you to interact with us. This is June the 23rd, and our viewers call in on the, on the numbers on the screen there, and uh, we like to get information from you, and uh, if you disagree with us, that's okay. That's how we, we, we learn. learn from each other. <laughs> yeah. The Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, meets two times a week, and we have meetups for fun, food, drink, and conversation. Mm -hmm. ASK's purpose is to supply a venue for community, camaraderie, and outreach to atheists, agnostics, free thinkers, and other like-minded persons in the East Tennessee area. Our Tuesday meeting is going on right now at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria in Knoxville in the Old City. Uh huh. And yeah, where am I picking up now? You're picking up. Now the smoke. Oh, yeah. I was going to take over this business. We have something special to announce. Mm hmm. The Rationalists of East Tennessee are producing Smoky Mountain Free Thought Advance, right. not a retreat. Uh, and it's going to be held on Friday and Saturday, uh, July 3rd and 4th. Okay, we're going to get In interrupted time. here. Okay. Because right. we've got a caller, but keep the place. I will. Okay, caller. Go right ahead. Yeah, it's Charles from Centaur, Illinois. Uh, hello, Charles. Go ahead. Hi, where do we get our values from? Yes. Uh -huh. One of the things I've noted mm -hmm. is that a lot of people don't seem to have an immense sense of scale of how long human beings have been around. For instance, we've got artwork and artifacts dating back past 30,000 years. Uh huh. So the idea of having moles and values and so forth seems to be as old as we are. Uh -huh. Oh yes, and so, uh, uh huh. Uh, well, it's a, that's a good point. In fact, um, we are here because they had values, at least long enough to survive to raise children. Yeah. <laughs> uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> okay. Now I think uh -huh. that that's where our values came from. The values uh -huh. that actually helped us. Survive. It makes sense. Uh, were uh, passed on, uh, are kind of like an a, a evolutionary mean for survival. M e m e m e s. Uh huh. I got uh, you. Professor Hawkins' uh, uh, Dawkins concept, but these values are seems to be a product of biological evolution. Uh -huh. Because they've had uh, uh, noticed that in the wild and in captivity, social species will share food with uh -huh. each other and will help each other out, uh -huh. things of this nature. For, for just bare survival alone, you're saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. But as the larger, the larger and more complex the brain begets, uh -huh. uh, the more values can be generated. Uh -huh. So more than just so, survival. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And the uh, uh, concepts and ideas of values, you can't find anywhere a group of people that don't have values. Exactly. exactly. And morals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... Some of those vows and morals might be significantly different from the ones that you and I are used to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they do exist. So, uh, about 97,000 years ago, there was a very large event, possibly environmental, maybe a major uh, super volcano eruption or something, that shut down and killed off most of the human race. 
we were down to like less than 20,000 people. And uh, they, the survivors, the less than 20,000 or so, uh, learned to extremely uh, cooperate as never before uh -huh. or they would have gone extinct. So that value moved on. Yeah, you, you know, your point is good. To operate, you have to cooperate. <laughs> the word co is where values come in in the social group. Right. We also have to be able to communicate to each other. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Very good. And uh, uh, it seems as, as though uh, uh -huh. morals and values and so forth are very much part of of uh, each social species that has the capacity to communicate with each other. Right. Look how well dolphins uh, cooperate and how complex yes. and sophisticated yes. their yes. Uh, verbal systems are. And, and would, you, would you agree that part of values develop because we want our lives to be more interesting? Yes. Uh, it's Especially when we have, uh, like, the uh, uh, the ancient cave paintings up in, uh, uh -huh. from around uh, when Cro-Magnon first walked into uh, Europe. Yes. 30,000 or so years ago. Mm hmm So, uh, 30,000 years ago, we had concepts of artwork. We had concepts mm -hmm. of color. We had concepts of uh, how... Uh, how to uh, communicate with uh -huh, each other uh -huh. using these ideas. Would, would, would you agree that probably very early children, human children, played? played? Oh, yes. Okay, now, to have a game, you have to have certain regulations. <laughs> and or agreed upon rules. Uh -huh, yes. yes uh -huh. To make it more interesting. Yeah. And so we can see how all these, what we call rules and values, <laughs> all of these evolved. We use the word emerged, and they evolved. They come into play. They change and modify to try to improve our lives, we hope. And it uh, Yeah, the concept of an emergent property. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, the ones that actually did it help the groups improve and survive and, you know, help one another uh, over, uh, say, 5,000 years were the ones that survived. And the ones that didn't help and improve uh -huh. the group uh, went extinct. Uh, because it's essential just for bare survival. You have to have enormous, enormous amount of cooperation. Yes, and that gave you time to work out things like the artwork mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, that's a good uh, point and, and things of that nature. So you have to have cooperation in order to have time to think. It takes time, time to, to think. think and discuss things. Remember, mm -hmm, we, mm -hmm. we yeah we we have no problems learning to speak. Okay, uh -huh. speaking is real easy for us. Reading is a, a relatively new concept uh -huh. reading and writing so uh, people have to uh, be taught that right uh -huh. okay in a formal setting but you don't have to teach a dolphin in a school how to talk to one another uh -huh, uh -huh. and you uh, can even in uh, up in Papua New Guinea and so forth where you know they don't even have the, the concept of literacy they don't have any problems communicating, uh, communicating and passing along Exa information. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, I had relatives who could not read at all. Oh, really? But they were great communicators, and they had enormous common sense, and I learned a lot from them. And uh, they, they were dear to me. They helped raise me. And they had, uh. you know, they, they had emotional sense, too. And I... <laughs> uh. Don't, uh, was, people sometimes confuse uh, education level with intelligence level, and that's not always the case. 
Well, there are a lot of kinds of schools, schools of hard knocks, as you well know. <laughs> yes. And uh, I, re I can remember such little things uh, from childhood. The older I get, the more little things I remember. They're part of my emotional development as a child. Mm -hmm. I can even remember, I know this sounds comical, my father, <laughs> who, you know, had to work during the Depression. I was born in the Depression, teaching me to fold toilet paper. <laughs> Can you imagine? So they wouldn't waste. Oh, yeah. You took <laughs> and, three and, squares. And, and the, gentle, the gentleness. <laughs> which he, and I remember he was, he, he didn't get much schooling. He had to learn the multiplication tables with me. And the gentleness of our learning this together was an, edu an emotional education all its own. And that's it. That's one of the things that I've noted. A lot of the parents and so forth don't spend that kind of quality time with their children. Oh, that's so crucial. And uh, We have a, a good neighbor who's helping us raise our grandchild. She doesn't know it, but I call her, uh -huh. I call her aunt <laughs> because she functions like a dear aunt. She's a Jewish mother of somebody else's kids, but she's raised yeah. her kids, and now she's up there, uh, out there, helping us raise this granddaughter. And my granddaughter loves her. And that's a great... Excellent. Yeah. We're lucky to have her. Yeah. But uh, we all have to all a social species, and we spent exactly. virtually most of our existence in tribes. Uh-huh. And tribes and tribes, uh, cooperation is essential for survival. The, the bonding. Be. Yeah, the bonding is so crucial, yeah. Okay. That, well, you know, when we were talking about the abortion issue a long ago, we tried to point out the bonding of the social group is how we develop into persons. We aren't just mm -hmm. born persons. We're born human. We're not, you know, we're, we're not kangaroo. <laughs> but it takes time after birth to develop personhood. And our teachers said you have to... I remember as a grammar school teacher said you have to develop your character, and I you think have to, you learn that mm -hmm. from your social environment is what I call it. I think you're dead right on that. Well, listen, I want to thank you and Rita. I'm sure is grateful too. You're you're calling in to help us on this. Um, okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, Charles always makes a good contribution for us. Isn't he? I want to go back to uh -huh. yeah. what I was talking about at the break. It was important. Yeah. Um, that there is going to be... Doo -doo -doo -doo, where was I? Uh, there's, uh, there's going to be uh -huh. a Smoky Mountain free thought advance. Not a retreat, but an advance. Uh -huh. And it's going to be on Friday and Saturday, July 3rd and 4th in Townsend. Townsend. Now, um, it's going to be held uh, at the Tremont Lodge and Resort. Um, I have the latest news I have is that people can come rather than signing up for both days. They could come for just one day, uh -huh. and would pay just half of the registration fee. And I would suggest that to really get the full scoop, to mm -hmm. go on to www.rationalists.org. Uh, and you can, that's the home page uh -huh. for the rationalists, and all the information will be on that. And that's going to be July 3rd and 4th. One day's registration is $60, two uh -huh. days is $120. Uh, and you'll be making your own sleepover arrangements or driving up. Uh -huh. I'm driving over for Knoxville myself the, the, both days, yeah. uh, rather than stay over in Townsend. It's not that far. That'd be a regular hoedown, won't it? <laughs> That'd be a good time. It should good be a good time. time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, well, we can Do you want to mention anything else, Joe, about the book club? Or well, let's see, where's the book club information? Right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the public is invited to participate, and that's on Sunday, Sunday isn't it? July 12, what time? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. We, we have a phone call. Okay, let's So you get the phone Go ahead, our phone call. Go ahead. Eric. My family passed through uh, from Pensacola, Florida. Uh huh. 
And um, uh, we're staying at a little motel here in East Portugal, and it's very nice. And uh, uh, I heard you talking about, like, different religions before, uh, like, uh, 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 other guy was talking about ancient aliens or something. And uh, my question was, um, uh -huh. is the, the motel we're staying in is run by Hindu people here. Uh-huh. And, uh, but when I looked in the drawer, there was actually a, a Christian Bible in uh -huh. the room here in the drawer. So I was wondering, uh, how could that get here, being that the hotel is run by Hindu people? <laughs> it's probably. I mean, why, why would they put that there? It's probably a Gideon Bible. Uh, yeah, put by the yeah, Gideons. Gideon yeah. Bible. But I mean, why, why would. Uh, well, part of Hindu you know, tradition is it's a, it's a pretty. Uh, I, I don't want to. Uh, be oversimplifying here, but part of Hinduism is to be more in cooperative of various religions uh, rather than to be exclusive. So that would not necessarily be contradictory. Uh -huh. and, and uh -huh. you, you see what I'm getting at? It's I mean, Hinduism. Uh, but I mean, if they don't believe in in, in God. Then what? You know, why would they be? You know, why why wouldn't there also be like a Hindu manuscript in the room? Well, Hinduism is not necessarily atheistic. Is that what you're saying? Um, depends well, on the. Uh, I believe it's. Uh, I believe it's polytheistic. Yeah, it's. It tends to be more polyreligion in some respects. It's. It's a, a highly eclectic. That tries to unify. It, yeah. Go. As far as the bottom line, as far as I'm concerned, is the bottom line money. I mean, it, uh, this part of the country, well, is predominantly fundamentalist Christian religion. Yeah, yes. And, yeah, and people are going to um, patronize a business, maybe, that has a Bible in the room. Well, Some people could feel yeah. very offended if there is not a Bible. I mean, okay. the Gideon Society over the years has done an excellent job of making sure that hotel rooms have Bibles in them. And nobody seems to, or very few people, seem to disagree with that. It's just so standard. You, 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 may, you, they, won't, you may not have a... They actually uh, pay, the, the pay the motel to put them in there. Do they? Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know. I, mean, I thought you I know have no that. idea. I, I well, don't. it's no, it's no big deal. <laughs> it's the same to me. You can either open it or, or not open it. Well, I yeah, mean, to me, just, I, you got to pay I just choice. put it out of the way myself. And if you want to read it, uh, I go mean, for it. See, from my perspective, uh, the Bible's a human book, anyhow. Yeah. And there's some interesting yeah, things right. there. If, if you believe it's written by humans and not necessarily the Word of God, correct? Right? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, um, but and then do you guys believe in Satan though instead? Like, do you worship Satan instead of? Oh no. Who, who, where'd you come up with that? <laughs> okay, no, uh, I don't think there is a Satan as a cosmic, conscious being. No, that makes no sense. Okay. So. Um, and then what? But what about what that other caller was saying? Do you believe? The, do you believe in the extraterrestrials that that are making these cave drawings thirty thousand years? Ago? I mean, there were. Do you believe there's something out there doing something? I don't personally have any evidence of extraterrestrial no, beings. No, no, there are cave paintings. That there are cave people, paintings. Cave paintings. There are the Lascaux caves painted the, seventeen thousand years ago on in Earth, southern France. On Earth, mm -hmm. they're real. Mm -hmm. And they're paintings that they have discovered that are 30,000 okay, years old, you're, but you're, they're made by yeah. humans. Yeah, There's uh, nothing to do with aliens. I think that caller just threw that word yeah, in, well, aliens. I mean, and, and, and chimpanzees paint as well. Mm, yeah, it's, yeah, elephants apparently do a little bit. <laughs> so, All right, well, thank you. Well, thank you for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Well, right. thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, that was interesting. Yes. I wonder where... Okay, how much more time from? we got? We got things to cover. <laughs> Well, we have we have about three minutes, and then it's time to okay. start winding up. Yeah, well, I, we don't want to. We do want to thank Sam and Jonas for working with us. They're not on the program here with us, but we want to thank them before the it's time too runs soon out. For that. But, I, but I, I, <laughs> we usually don't have time, so I oh, want to thank you're, you. You're fitting that one in right but, now. But one okay. of our callers mentioned the, the the key word was was cooperation, and that's what we've been trying to emphasize, is that. 
the, the values that most of us believe in or like to uh, reinforce in our children and our friends, those values come by interacting with other people. Mm -hmm. And then even an artist is interacting with the world of nature sometimes, but sometimes he paints people and he has to learn from other artists. Musicians learn from each other. So cooperation is absolutely basic to human happiness. Right. If, if I had to be with just myself alone, I think I'd turn myself into a multiple personality so I could have a decent conversation. <laughs> this to be alone seems to be miserable. You know, just to be alone, nobody to talk with. I don't know. That's another conversation. I want, I want to have a word in here before we go. Quit. All right? Being practical soul, two feet on the ground type mm -hmm. person, I want to just mention my very simple sources because this is what I think it would be important for all of us to think about uh -huh. as we are dealing with the rest of the world. Values come from parents and parents doing good things consistently. Some people choose religious tenets, as I said, to, as a source of values. Just looking at other people and how they act is a teaching tool for... And think about that when one is acting oneself. I mean, if you litter on the ground, uh, that's not valuing the earth. And if you litter, someone is going to observe you littering. Mm -hmm. So stash it in your pocket and find a dumpster to put it in or trash barrel at home. Um, personal experience is it just learning a value if you, you learn the value of good health if you touch something hot and burn yourself uh -huh. personal experience is a teacher uh -huh. is a source of values um, <laughs> yes yes you're right other people's experiences just mm -hmm. watching uh -huh. someone else uh -huh. having uh -huh. a problem uh -huh. you know? um, reading certainly is what oh, yeah. believe it or not the U.S. government, or whatever government you're involved, can be a source of learning and values. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, dialogue, as we've been trying to have here, mm -hmm. and I think one that's really neglected, is listening. If you're talking all the time and not listening, mm -hmm. you're not learning. And learning, learning is required to develop values, mm -hmm. to have uh -huh. The happy life that Joe wants us to have. Uh -huh. How's that? That sounds good. That's, uh -huh. that's just put that in your pocket and pull it out and think about those different sources when you're driving along. That's, and now we're going to have to close. Oh yeah. All right. Time to wrap things up. And this has been Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville, the Rationalists of East Tennessee. I am Rita Lund. And I'm Joe Barnhart, and here's a number, uh, what is it? Well, it's on the screen, yeah. 865-272-9060. That's another number, huh? Or email freethoughtforum mm -hmm. at yahoo.com. You can see this show on Tuesdays from 5 to 6 Eastern Time on the Knoxville Station. And we thank Sam and Jonas for our for their technical support and the staff uh -huh. of CTV Knox and our callers. Yeah.